I'm live, guys. Okay. I hit the like button by accident. Okay, got to bring this down. Okay, you guys. We are going to do the mixed media background. Collage and mixed media. Oh, my goodness. You guys, just bear with me. Just bear with me. Okay, so this is a collage background, and we're going. I've already. I'll, I'll this in a second. This girl here, we had just finished her, Flora, and she is going to be. I'm going to make a copy of her about a five by seven uh, size, and that'll make her small enough to be able to fit for me to cut her out and fit her into this world. Okay, and this world is going to be the background for our girl. Okay, and I have done this before. Let me just give you a quick sample. A quick sample. This is my version of Pocahontas, and that's one of those collage backgrounds with the paint. And then I put my girl in the world. Okay, so now you know what we're kind of going for. So I went ahead and I collaged the sky in this clock, this castle, this big rose, these two hummingbirds, um, this little bird here, whatever this is, parakeet. I'm not sure what it is. Roses. Um, this is a little closet. Um, this was a bottle down here. And so anyway, all this is going to change with paint. It's going to become one little fantasy world. So let me turn this around and we'll get started. Let me see if I need to push that down. No. Okay. See this up top here, the sky, we're going to make the water down below like, like it's reflecting onto the water, which is going to be down here. So I'm going to start on the water right now. Okay. Let me grab, I got my colors. And what I like to use is just cheap acrylic paints, flat. Make sure they're just regular acrylic paints that have no shine to them, which are the cheap acrylic paint paints. Um, so I'm going to be using this color in the sky. There's a little bit of an orange. Um, and this purple okay but this is going to be the water and then we're going to throw some waves in and all that with the white so and we might use some of this purple too okay we'll see okay so let me just put on my palette put all the colors we're going to use Be very, I don't think a lot of that orange will be used. I don't know. We'll see. Because have you ever seen that? Like when you're looking at water, the water becomes the color of the sky because the sky reflects into the water. Okay, so that's what I like to do. Okay, so with my finger, we're going to do finger painting and we're going to put in the water, which is all those colors right there. Here we go. Oh, and just a second, and I'll explain this to you. Something else I didn't explain. Um, I glued all these down. You can use matte medium. You can use, um, I make my own like matte medium kind of uh, decoupage, matte decoupage, by taking regular school glue in a container like this and adding about six, seven squirts of clear acrylic matte coating. Okay, so when you do that and you glue these on, um, it dries matte so that you can paint over it. It com becomes a paintable surface and it also becomes a, wipe a paintable and a wipeable surface. You can, if you mess up, you can just wipe it off with a baby wipe. Also, I did also went, go ahead, I, so I, I put six, seven squirts into the glue to make it a matte glue or make it like a matte medium. But I also, after I glued everything on, I did spray this whole thing with the clear matte coating. Again, it makes it a paintable surface. It makes it a wipeable surface. So if you mess up, you can wipe it off. Also, so you can smear things if you need to, to make mist and stuff like that. Okay, so here we go. And I'm putting in all of this. And it's going to look a little weird at first, but as the young people today say, trust in the trust. 
And if it all turns out horrible, which I don't, it's not going to. Um, but if it did, remember I said you created a paint, you, a wipeable surface when you put that, um, when you use a matte medium type of uh, glue or your, or your homemade matte medium. And um, especially when you spray on the um, clear matte, clear matte acrylic paint. And I got that at where Hobby Lobby, but you can get it anywhere. I'm just going to throw some more purple in through here. Okay. And we're going to get this whole thing going with the purple paint, with the shades of purple. And then we will go. Um, and then we'll go in with white with a brush. I'll show you guys that. That's what's gonna really start bringing things together. Okay. I'm taking some of that out of there. Throwing some more of this pink color in here. Then when you throw in some of the orange, just a little bit since that's inside of the sky there. And we'll throw that in a little bit. Cool, that looks good. We're just blending it in a little bit. And it looks the best if it's blended next to that magenta color. It blends in with that magenta really well. So I'll be I'm blending the magenta and the orange right next to each other. There we go. And you don't need a whole lot of orange, just a little bit. Okay. Got a little bit more purple right into here. And you keep playing with this until you like it. All right. Okay. So now we have this in, and we're going to now throw in some white. Okay. Well, that looks pretty. Okay, so now we're going to throw in some white. Let me get the white acrylic paint out. Okay, and start throwing in some white here and there. And that's what really starts um, making it look like water. So if you've always, if you've seen me do this work before, this is how I do it. And um, these techniques, when you really break them down, are not hard. Right now, what am I doing? Finger painting. And I originally learned how to do this from uh, Deeding Willingham about three or four years ago. And um, just fell in love with it and uh, I've been doing it ever since. Love it. This is the same type of stuff I do in the um, Abandoned Places book, but in the Abandoned Places book there's already a picture there and then you add collage to it. This was just a blank, oh and this is what I'm starting out with, I should let you know what I'm using. 
This is a piece of cardstock that's 11 by 14. The reason I work so big is for one that I can fit a whole lot of collage bits on here. But the other reason I work this big is because um, uh, it's because I um, make um, prints out of my work, and I like to be able to make 11 by 14 prints and 8 by 10. So you can go down and make the 8 by 10s, but I can't make an 8 by 10 or 8.5 by 11 and go up to an 11 by 14. So I start with an 11 by 14. So I can make cop prints at 11 by 14 and then I can go down to 8 by 10s. So in my Etsy shop, um, I will be selling these and I'll be able to offer prints of this work um, in 8 by 10 and 11 by 14. And I do that too so that if you want to get a frame, it's easy to just go and buy a frame anywhere. There's 8 by 10s, 11 by 14 frames everywhere. So then you're able to frame it and frame it at a really economical price. So, okay. Um, then I like to use this one brush. It's a very um, stiff brush. It makes great waves, great clouds. And I'm looking for it. Where is it? Just a second, please. I have two of them. And this is the smaller one right here. But I really don't want the smaller one. I want the bigger one. Where the heck is it? When you know, like, you're one of your most important tools that you love, you just can't find. Okay, just a second, guys. If you don't want to wait for me to look for this real quick, fast forward. Why you hear me rustling through everything? It's so strange. I keep piles on my desk, like a little pile of stuff that I use all the time, and then I put stuff in these um, cigar boxes. And I always have this one brush out that I'm looking for. Wouldn't you know, the one brush you're looking for, you can't find. Let me just search one more time, you guys, in my little pile next to me, and make sure that I don't have it. Like I said, if you don't want to wait for me, just fast forward this little part. Huh. Isn't that horrible? Okay. All right. So I can't find that brush. So we will wait a minute. I just found it. Okay. I never put this brush away in my jar. I always have it out, but it was put away. All right. Found it. If you can get yourself a nice stiff brush, pretty bristly, so it's not, um, it kind of seems like too hard to paint with. This is the kind of brush I like to use to make waves, to make clouds. It's just flipping awesome. I have it in this size, and then I have it in a little bit smaller size, too. Okay. I can't even tell you the brand because I bought it a long time ago at Tuesday morning. And when I first got it, I was like, oh, this brush sucks. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. Like, it's so stiff. What can I do with that? Keep all your brushes because you never know what you can use a brush for. And maybe now you can't use it, but down the road you can use that brush for something. So just keep it. Okay, so um, I'm going to make some, uh, some waves here. Okay, and we're also going to put a few more waves like in through here. Some, a little bit more rustly ones. Okay, perfect. Then we're going to, okay, I'm not going to do a ton of them, but we're going to, I'm going to show you how to do some splashing, some splashing up. And I don't want to splash up yet because I want to paint, I'm going to paint this, I'm going to paint, do stuff on this bird. I'm going to even do stuff here, but I'll come over here and I'll show you. So if you want to do some splashes, you take this brush and you just go up like this. Okay. And just, it just, you're just splashing up like that. And that's how you make splashes. Like, I don't like that splash there because it's a little bit. It's a little too much. 
So, remember I told you it's a wipeable surface. Let's wipe it off. Okay. There we go. And when you get, when you make a splash, you do want it to be kind of, you know, po not pointy, but thinner as you get up and, and lighter. Okay. So that's how you can do a lot of different splashing. And there'll be splashing going all the way on all this stuff. Okay. But... We, I don't want to do the splash yet because I'm going to do things to these roses. So we're going to leave all of this here the way it is for right now. Okay, so we'll leave this water alone for now. Okay. And let me make sure my video is still on, make sure I'm still in frame. Okay. All right, so we've worked on this good enough. Just a second, I'm feeling like I'm a little bit. I'm gonna bring that up a little bit. I was a little uneven there, okay. I, my water looked like it was veering off down that way. <laughs> it kind of needs to be this, you know, similar. Okay. So, we're going to go up to the sky and start at the top. So, let me bring, let me see what I need to do to put you guys into focus here. Because I want to work up here at the sky. So, we need to be at the complete top here. Maybe if I bring this up, will that work? Nope. Bring it obviously bringing it further down. That's what I needed to do. Okay, so we're gonna put some. Um, do I want to put some clouds in the sky or not? Let's put some clouds in. So I'm taking my scruffy brush. You know, before I do that, I have got to dry this water here. So I just put my arm in it. So let me dry this at the bottom. I'm also going to show you how I put, um, I do splashes and then how I do little drops in the water too, but that's down the road. Okay. So let's take our brush here and let's put some clouds in. So I just put some clouds in like this. Like that. Okay, let's put some more clouds in like that. Okay. You can also take some clouds and put them in like this. Throw some in like that. You could throw some in like this. And then take your finger and go like that. So that they're more fluffy clouds. Um, and I'm actually not liking that fluffy cloud, so let's take that away. And I'm like when things don't work out, when I don't like them, because then I can show you guys um, how you can just wipe, you can wipe things off. Dry that area a little bit. Okay. And let's do another fluffy cloud right here. And we'll just throw another little, little cloud into here. Okay. And we'll throw some clouds in that go right into that clock. So we bring that clock into the whole thing. Okay, so there's some clouds. Easy peasy. Okay. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to throw in like snow or... 
Oh, another thing I want to show you guys is how you can take your clouds and make them look like there's a little bit of rain coming from them. Especially if you're using a stiff brush. You don't want a lot of paint on your brush either. A little bit of paint. Just take your, especially the fluffier clouds, just go down like this and it creates rain. Isn't that cool? Just straight down with this stiff brush and you can create rain, which I think is cool. Let's throw some rain right there. Okay, so it just adds a little extra something there. Okay, now you could do that with this stiff brush or you can choose a uh, fan brush. I'm going to use a fan brush. Um, I'm going to put a bunch of... Um, sprinkle a bunch of like either snow or it's going to be stars. Well, let me think first. What do I want to do? Yeah, it's going to be kind of like um, snow or stars. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> it's your fantasy world. You can do it how you want to do it. <laughs> either way, this is how to make snow or it's how to make stars. Oops. So I just took some white paint with my fan brush, watered down some of the paint, and let's go like this. Okay, then we're gonna go over all this at the top. We'll probably put uh, all this, we're gonna also put this all in the water down there too, but not yet. I want some on this castle. Look how magical it makes that look already. See? Makes it look fabulous. Okay. Let me just turn this around so you guys can see it. Um, let me bring the camera up. There we go. And you guys can see that. Look how pretty that looks. Okay. All right. So let me turn this back around. And let me bring the camera back down. can see what we're working with okay next um i'm going to put in some stars and we're going to do the stars so this could be shooting i think we're, these are going to be represented right now snow and stars in the sky so we're going to have snow coming down and and stars in the sky so take again some white acrylic paint and a liner brush And we're going to make, we already have our smaller stars, right? That's the flecking, the, fle the, the flecking that we just did. Now we're going to make our um, medium stars. And it's just three little, let me make sure that you guys are seeing that. Yeah, let me come in. Okay. I did one right there, so let me show you. So it's three little flick outs. One, two, three. You don't even have to really flick out. You can just, see? So it's just like that. And this is just making little medium sized stars. I'm gonna erase that one because it looks kind of by each other. They don't need to be out by each other. I also do like to flick it out like watch I do like to go here and go flick out flick out and then flick out for the third one because it does kind of make them look more natural and the reason I don't use a paint pen is because you can use a paint pen if you want you're more than welcome to but I think it makes the, the stars look too controlled here they look more like little small shooting stars, little medium sized shooting stars. Okay, making sure you guys are seeing what I'm doing. 
Okay, so now let's make some real big shooting stars. Okay, see so we put a dot down and you just flick out like that. Actually, I don't like that one. So let's remove it. Okay, so let's try it again. You put a dot down, and let me make sure that you guys are seeing me. Yeah. You put a dot down, or there might be a dot already there, and then you just flick out. Perfect. I like that one. Let's do another shooting star right here. And I just flipped out over across the uh, castle, which is perfect. Because the more that you... You, I'll put some stars in through here. The more you do stuff and you, you incorporate like um, the stars or any shooting stars into other things on here, it brings the whole painting together. It all looks like it's one thing. Like I'm going to put a shooting star right there on this rose and flick out. You can have the shooting stars going different ways. I'm going to put one right over here where the castle's at. I don't know if you guys can see the castle. Yep. I put a dot there. I'm going to put one right here and then have it go onto the clock face. Also, let's put a couple of stars over here. I don't know if you guys are seeing this or not, but okay. I think that looks good. And we got some shooting stars. And you know, let's throw some lightning in. Or let me throw in some birds. So, um, I'll throw some lightning in coming in over here from the side. And you kind of can just go over different things. And whenever I see lightning, like in magazines, um, I cut lightning out because I, I want to see what lightning looks like. I mean, there's no right or wrong. I mean, lightning, it goes crazy. It goes all kinds of ways. Thick, thin lines. It, it it's just it's crazy what lighting does there's no rhyme or reason to it it goes everywhere but it's cool to study lightning especially when you're harvesting images for this kind of work when you see lightning when you see um, different um, skies water harvest them for your backgrounds but also harvest them for um, reference too always be harvesting images for reference that's huge okay so there's some cool flipping um, lightning coming out Cool. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so there's that lightning just coming out of that corner there. Cool, huh? Love it. Okay, next, let's do some birdies. And we're going to do those in black. So let me grab some black paint, just some black acrylic paint. Apple barrels you can get for 50 cents at Walmart. The only thing cheaper is when Michaels does their three or four for a dollar on their uh, Craft Smart paints. And when they do that, I would take advantage if you want to do this kind of work. 
and buy three deep of each color, like buy three purples of different shades of purple, three greens, three reds, three oranges, three teals, three blues, and get yourself a nice uh, set for 10 bucks. You can, buy an, an, you can buy an obscene amount of acrylic paint. Okay, just want to make sure I'm in frame here. Okay. Oh, you know what? There's one more thing I want to do on my watch face right there. Um, let's do some, uh, some little s stars on here. I've got to add some to here. And we'll throw some, a shooting star here. So now we've kind of turned this, um, watch face into like a little planet. Okay. So it's not just... It's not a watch face anymore. No, it's a planet. And we'll throw like a little nebula ring around it too. Maybe a white ring around it. We'll see. Okay, but let's focus now on some birds. So I got the black acrylic paint on my palette right there. We might throw wind too on this. And I'll show you guys how to create wind. So you're just creating a little V like that. A little upside down V. It's coming in really kind of close so you can see this. So we're just doing like a little upside down V and that's how you do the birds. Like that. Now you can do also do larger birds where you do a line like that. Make sure you guys are seeing this. Okay. And then you kind of come out and down like that come out and down like that. And the reason I saw those birds like that was I was at the ocean and I said, how do birds look far away? And um, some look like the little Vs and then some you could actually see more of a shape and that's the shape that I saw in the sky when I was studying like how birds look far away. So Always be studying everything when you're out in nature, when you're out in public. Always be studying. And to me, it's not work. It's fun. And I swear, nothing is more magical or fun to watch than a flock of birds. Oh, my goodness. Let me see. Right. Okay. Um, how they can all fly together. It's like amazing. You're just like, how do they all just stay together in a flock like that? It's like just crazy. They all turn together. It's, it's amazing. I know it's the simple things in life, but I have these humming, this, these two hummingbirds, and they're like little baby hummingbirds, so they're really small. I mean, hummingbird, hummingbirds are small anyway, and these are like little babies, and they live like in one of my olive trees. And um, I go out there to water. I have a little vegetable garden in the front by my mailbox. I know that's kind of weird, but I want to grow vegetables so that like if people want to come by, they can grab a zucchini or something like that. So anyway, um, and so these birds, they live... And, well, what I do is I spray, um, I spray my garden down, then I'll spray the tree above it, and they love to drink the water that's dripping off of the uh, tree, and um, I'm going to see if I can't, okay, bring this back in a little bit. So they come every morning, and after I spray that area, everything's dripping, and I spray the tree down too, um, they drink the water that's like little, to me it looks like little dew drops. And they like to drink the water there, off the off the leaves, the water dripping off the leaves. It's pretty cool. And it's two little hummingbirds, and they come right next to me too. They are so adorable. It's my my favorite bird is hummingbirds, and I have what do I have in this picture? Two hummingbirds. <laughs> All right. 
put some birds in these flowers here. Okay, I'm putting birds in other places you guys aren't seeing right now, sorry. Okay, so now we're gonna come out a little bit so you guys can see better. But I want it, because I was doing something so small, I want it to, um, since we were doing something so small, I want it to come in really close so you guys could see those. Okay, so now you guys can see those birds. Isn't that cool? Okay, simple, simple. Simple, simple. Okay, so let me rinse my brush. Okay, what do we want to work on next? Okay, next we want to put some um, some um, rain on, not rain, snow dripping or water, snow or water dripping on this building here, on this castle. So, let me bring that down. And so I'm gonna start doing that and then I'll keep turning my picture back and forth here when I'm done so you guys can see. Okay, so let's put some right here. So I make a V like this and then let the water come down. Okay, that line got a little thick right there. And I do my, my it, whether it's water or whether it's snow, I do it at different uh, lengths. Like I don't have everything hitting at the same. See how this one's hitting longer, shorter, longer, shorter. It makes it look more natural. Some more water in right here. Water or snow. Put some in right there. And I think it looks so magical to have uh, snow or water dripping from your little castle. I need to start going through magazine and harvesting more castles. I'm kind of out of castles. I always like to put castles in the background. Like I have right here. Because in my opinion, castles are magical. At least they're magical looking. I don't know if they're magical places, but they're magical looking. And they look good in my art. <laughs> okay. Make sure that you guys are still seeing everything. Yep. And the thing is, whether you're making snow or whether you're making water, as you get to the bottom of it, make it thinner. You don't want it to be thick as you get to the bottom, right? Because of gravity. So make it look a little bit thinner. Or if you want your water to be thick when it hits the ground, go ahead. <laughs> it's your world. You can do what the hell you want to do. But I think it will look a lot better. Okay, I don't like that there. Let's remove it. 
Okay. All right. So I'm going to do more snow right in here. I put a line down first, as you guys see. Kind of like a little, and not a perfect line either, because it's snow or it's water. It's never going to be perfect. And I decided in this scene, we're going to call what's on this building snow. I just decided. Now I'm having that the snow um, hit the um, hit onto this bird, which is perfect. It starts bringing your whole painting together, like everything relates. It makes everything relate to each other. Now that bird's relating to the picture because now the water's dripping over the bird, and I had it drip over the bird here too. I think that's really important. Again, now there's this bird right here, its wings. It just got some drips also. So, are you guys seeing? Yeah, there we go. Make sure you guys are seeing what I'm talking about. And you're just making like a little V like that, and then you just bring the water down. That looks good. Okay, so let me turn this around so you guys can see. Let me get you in focus here. Just a second. Let me bring my camera up so you guys can see. Oh, actually, let me bring it like that. Bear with me. Okay. So see what that looks like here? Now you have all that water, or you have all that snow dripping off that castle. Look how much more magical that looks. And then the um, clock-faced shooting stars and the regular stars and it just makes it look very magical over here. And the whole sky looks very pretty and magical. Okay. Let's see if I need to come. No, I need to go down. You guys can see everything. Okay. All right. So, what do we want to do next? Um, I want to make this into a water feature. Um, this rose. So, I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to do that. And also, this right here, I'm going to put people here. So, this is going to be like a little mountain at the top of these roses. Okay. And how much time have we been working? Okay, I'll work for another 15 minutes. Okay, what am I doing? Okay, still working with the line of brush and the white paint. Let's go up to the top and kind of do it in a messy way. Kind of put in some like um, little water lines here and there. You're just following the shape of the rose, but you're not do, don't do it like perfect because it and that looks like there's like um, it makes it look messy, like how like how um, water would look. Not perfect. Okay, and then you're gonna follow the lines in the rose like this in a messy way. Just kind of brush them in, and then make little drips. Okay. Hopefully you guys are seeing this. Yeah, I, mean, I need to come in closer on that. Okay, so 
you guys can see. Let me see if you can see over here. There we go. Okay. So, and this is turning your uh, rose into a little water feature. So now this isn't a rose anymore. It's a water feature and it's like a little mountain because people are going to walk at the top of it. I'll show you how to create some people. People that are silhouettes of people. So the people are going to be far away. So it's going to be just silhouettes, kind of like those birds. Silhouettes of birds, silhouettes of people. Okay, again, let's follow real messily follow this rose. Okay. You're just following the, the shape of the rose. And those are all gonna be drips of water. So this is how you turn a rose into a water feature. And we're going to go right over that little, um, I run it right down over this, um, well you can't see it, but below this rose is that uh, like little uh, armoire. And I brought it right over the armoire and you guys will see that in a second. I like to throw a lot of water and snow in my pieces. I think it looks, a lot of water to me just looks really magical. And that's the kind of worlds I like to create, just little world, little magical worlds. And the reason I like my world to be pretty and magical is, you know, there's enough ugly in the world. So I'm going to create, try to create beauty in the world. And there's other artists who like to represent, you know, the ugliness of the world and the hard times, and, and that's important too. But I like to create beauty. Somewhere to escape, a little fantasy world. That's what I like. I, I don't really need to be reminded of how tough the world is or how ugly it can be. Not always, but it can be, as we all know. Especially in today's world. Oof. Things can get ugly quick. Okay. I just like to my, my goal is just for someone to be able to look at one of my paintings or my artwork and say, that's somewhere I'd like to escape to. That's the biggest compliment ever to me. Okay, let me see, right here, okay. Like for someone to say, ooh, I'd like to live in that world. What a compliment. So that's my goal. to 
Oh, you guys are seeing it? Cool. Well, it's not easy always doing this on camera because you can't get always at the angle that you want to get at and stay in frame. I'm doing my best though. Okay. Sorry I was getting so quiet on you guys. I was focusing. Okay, we're gonna follow this again right here. And then put some more water in. My brush is getting kind of gunked with a lot of paint. Let's see if we can get it to still work. Yeah, it's still working, thank goodness. Okay. That looks good. We're gonna go over here and just Another one last strip over here. Oh, we'll do another one right here. Just covered up that bird. <laughs> bird gone. Or it's behind the water. some water over here. Okay. So there it goes some water up here. It's going to go right over the shooting star. Just a second, my brush got really gunky white paint started drying up. Okay. There we go. I think that that looks good. Um... Oh, I didn't throw any, okay, just a second, guys. I didn't throw any drips up here at the very top. So we need to do that. How could I miss that? What am I doing? I felt like there was something missing. I was like, wait a minute, I didn't put any, I didn't put any water up here at the top. Cool. That looks good. Perfect. Look how pretty that looks. Now we've turned that rose into a water feature. Now I'm going to turn it around so you guys can see it in just a second. I want to show you guys how to, okay, right here at the top, we act like that's a mountain right there on top of that rose. And I'll show you how to put in some people. 
silhouettes of people. Liner brush, some black paint, black acrylic paint. And let's just put in a few people. So I'm gonna put in a head, a body, and then some legs. See? And they just can kind of come out of your brush. So put a head in, a body, and then some legs. And make them different sizes. Um, I'll make this one really short right here. Okay. And this just kind of represents that there's a mountain right here. So see, now there's little people. So let me come out a little bit. <clears throat> okay, and turn this around so you guys can start seeing what we're working, what we've done so far. Okay, let me bring this up. Okay, so now you can see what we've done so far. Let me come up a little bit more. Okay. So that water feature looks so cool, and then you got the little piece. So here's the water feature made out of a rose, and then you got the little people, and it looks like it's a mountain that they're they're climbing over this hill or this mountain, and then there's a waterfall or a water feature that is coming down from this mountain. This mountain of water made by a rose okay so when we're done with this nothing is going to look like nothing a rose isn't going to be a rose and that clock face isn't a clock face now it's a planet this castle has snow or water all flowing from it so i know when i if you haven't seen me do this work before and you guys are like what the heck is she doing okay so the next thing i'm going to do let me see, how much time do we have? Okay. Is I'm going to make another little world, a little space world out of the, um, like its own little world in space inside of this armoire, this right here. I'm going to paint them black inside. And this will be the last thing we do on this video. And then we'll continue in another video. Uh, let me just a second finding the right paintbrush. I have watercolor brushes and then I have acrylic brushes, so I don't like to use my water brushes for my acrylics, so I do keep them separate. Here we go. Okay, and I love whether it's a water brush for water or acrylic. Like this is my water brush right here. This is a water brush. I love a pointed edge. See how nice that is? Again, same pointed edge for my acrylic brushes. Because you can get into nooks and crannies. You can do anything with a pointed brush. You don't even have to buy any other size brush. Hardly. If you have one that has a point on it. That's how I see it. I don't even use the rest of my brushes. I only use the ones that have the points on them. It's almost why I don't like, to, unless I can get it really dirt cheap, I don't like to buy a pack of brushes because I like to pick out the brush I want, which is usually either a liner brush or a pointed brush. Unless it's these scruffy brushes, like these hard bristle ones for clouds and stuff. But as you paint more and do more things, you'll discover what you like and what you don't like. I'm painting these, this in black. It'll take a couple of coats. 
and I'm leaving the beaks in of these hummingbirds. This one right here, the one at the top, I'm just going to paint over because it's already, it's not going to show. But this one's light enough with the white on top that it's going to show. So let's leave the beak of that hummingbird. Oh, it can still, well, yeah, you can still see the other one too. See how with this point, with the brush with the point on the end, a point to your brush, see how I can get into all kinds of areas that I need to get into. Love it. So if you want to know what kind of brush I would invest in, is get an acrylic paint, and it doesn't have to be expensive, especially for your acrylics get a brush that has a point on it for acrylic get a, um, a a real stiff brush so you can make clouds and get a um, a liner brush those are the three brushes I mainly use for everything and then for watercoloring when I do watercoloring I mainly use um, Again, a pointed brush. This right here, or the Jane Davenport one. This is another great watercolor brush. And look, it's retractable. It's flipping love that. Now, I'm gonna need to do a second coating on this right here, which I'll do in a second. I'm gonna let it dry a little bit. So we'll start um, on here. And by the time I do this one, that should be dry. You know what I need to highlight this beak just a second I'm gonna put some highlights on this beak or this beak is going to disappear and I don't want it to disappear so let me see if I'm gonna use pencil if I'm gonna use let me see which I'm gonna use I might use pencil or I might use this Posca a Prismacolor pencil let's see so I kind of need to put some highlights on this beak yeah, I'm going to need to put, I'm going to have to do a, oh wait, maybe this pencil will work. No, it's not working too good. Excuse my head. Okay, I just put a little bit of white on that beak and that's going to um, save this beak. I'm going to put a little white down here on this one too. And I can add something else onto it, um, which I probably will add a little bit more color into the beak, but I don't want that beak to disappear into the black, which it will, which it was about to. I saved the beak of the hummingbird. We don't want the beak to be gone.
and I love creating these little fantasy worlds for my um, for my girls that I like to draw. And then, like I said, I will um, make a copy of my girl, of my Angie's Angel. That's what I call them. And um, I, I make about a copy, a five by seven copy, and then I cut it out, and then I put her in the world, and then I show you how I put her in, so it doesn't look like it's just pasted in. We do stuff to the girl when she's in there to make her look like she belongs in the painting, like she was drawn in. But that's a ways down. Oh, and another thing. I have to take this to, um, I take this, once I'm done with this world, I take it to, um, I take my girl and I, um, you can do it at your house. You can make 11 by, you can make uh, two uh, five by sevens pick copies of this at, the ha at your house. And then I cut her out and I put her into this world. Then when I'm done with this whole thing, I take this whole thing to, um, where do I go? Office Max, Office Depot, one of the two. And um, I get copies made on brochure paper. Brochure paper, I use map settings, which gets the color really nice. And then I use brochure paper because the brochure paper takes the color. So the mixture of the brochure paper taking the color in, true color, and also using map settings makes beautiful prints. So if you want to make prints of your work, there is two big keys of being able to do it. Then for my left, that's for my eight by tens. Then my prints that I do 11 by 14, I use uh, 11 by 14 uh, photo paper for those ones. If they had 11 by 14 brochure paper, I'd be using that, but they don't got that. They only have an eight by 10, they don't have an 11 by 14, so. And that's a way that you can make really nice prints of your work at like Office Max. I'm trying to think if it's Office Max or Office, I think it's Office Depot. It's whoever Office Depot teamed with, and I think that's Office Max. So remember, when you go there, get some they have they sell the brochure paper there so you want brochure paper and you want um, you want to do it on map settings when they set their um, printer and you will get like true colors your colors will come out really really true to what you painted um, very vibrant because of the map settings and because of the brochure paper. And then for your, your that's for your 8x10s, and then for your 11x14, um, I use 11x14 uh, uh, photo paper. And they come out nice too. So let's put our second coat over here. And I will, with paint, add some color back into the um, beaks of the hummingbirds. I mean, I'll probably leave, like, um, you know, the highlight on there and add some color into there, into the beak. But I'm glad I whited, put a, some white into those beaks so they didn't disappear. I want to be able to tell what the beak was and what the background was. And we don't want that. Do we? Hell no! Oh, this makes me so happy using two hummingbirds in my in my uh, piece here. Oh my God. So flippin' excited. And we're gonna add color into um, these hummingbirds. And I discovered a way of doing it, believe it or not, with, I could do it with alcohol markers, which I may still do, but I, I just had some, um, right here, some Sharpies that I never use. 
and I put these two together, one as a highlight and one as a um, as the uh, shade. And I did it right here. I don't know if you can see it. I'll have to probably come in close. And it came out really cool. So a lot of people, not everybody has alcohol markers, but most people have some um, Sharpies or something that's like Sharpies. So. You can actually, if you smear it right after you put the Sharpie on, you can smear it into the next thing and it kind of will um, blend in, so like an alcohol marker, on these magazine pieces. On paper, I don't think you'd be able to blend as easily, but on these magazine pieces, you can. Okay. Okay, so now we have those little bags. So I'm going to quickly do this, and then we will be done for this video. Um, I'm going to take some white paint with a little bit of water and the white paint. We're going to do some little stars here by splashing stars in with the with my um, fan brush. Okay, got this little fan brush here. Okay, so here we go. Put some little stars in there. Look how we created another little world inside of that cabinet. Cool, huh? So now it's not a cabinet anymore, is it? It's a little world. But while we're down here, let's just put some sprinkles down here in the water. So keep on going right into the water. I love seeing like snow in the water. I think that looks so cool. And we'll throw some on the roses. Okay. I don't want to put any on the hummingbird yet, so I'm going to take the any like the little snow off the hummingbirds because I don't want that to interrupt because I'm going to use some Sharpies on there. I'm going to change the color of these birds. So. I don't want any on the birds. Don't want anything to mess with that. Okay. Anyway. Look how magical that looks. Right when you start adding all of that, um, when you start adding all those little stars and this, or stars or snow in here, it's going to be stars. So let's now, you got your smaller stars. Let's make some bigger stars, some shooting stars. Okay, let's go. A second, we're gonna come in on this whole thing so you guys can see it. Not like that much. Okay, there we go. Oh, that was way too much white paint. Okay. Alright, so let's come in here and do some little stars where we flick them out. Little flick stars. Okay. Three little flick outs. With these medium sized stars. And now let's throw some shooting stars in here. Shooting star right here. Awesome. 
can throw another one right here. Beautiful. Just looking to see that I want to put anything else in there. Okay, that's all for now. We might throw some planets in there, and I'll show you guys how to make planets. We will throw planets in there. We'll throw in a few little planets in, in here, but that'll be on the next video. Um, let me turn this around so you guys can see what we have so far. Let me come back out. Bear with me as I... Okay, so this is what we have so far. There's the water, okay? And then, and there's the water with the, like the snow and the water, which I think looks so pretty. Okay, and then, um, there's the clouds. And the birds and the people on the little rose mountain of water. <laughs> And the castle, and the clock in the sky, and then we have our little world over here. And over here, like I said, I'm going to throw in real small little planets, and I'll show you how we're going to do that. So there'll be little planets in here, and we'll do that next time. So when we come back, we'll put planets in here. Um, I will show you how I'm going to color these uh, birds up with actually Sharpie markers. Um, uh, what else? Um... I might throw some planets on this bird over here. Okay, throw a couple of planets on this bird. We're gonna put some catch light in the eyes of the birds. Um, this right here is gonna be another water feature. I may do this water feature. I will do it. I'll do it off camera because it'll be the same way I did the one over here to the same one here. So I'll do that off camera. Um, but on camera, I will do the planets here, the planets on the body of this bird. So this bird won't just be a bird. This bird will be a planet. It'll be a, its body will be a bunch of little planets. We'll put catch lights in the birds. We'll take and put the splashes. Remember I told you down here in the water, right there, there's going to be splash, a bunch of splashes that come out up onto these birds, up onto the flowers. Okay. But it's looking so pretty right now. I am loving it. All right. So that's our little fantasy world for now. Yeah, we're at a minute and 17 seconds or an hour and 17 minutes. I need to shut up <laughs> you guys are like uh can we go now all right you guys that's it um we'll finish this up um in the next video i think i'm not gonna i'm not gonna have this as a continuation as a color me um i'll just label this as the background portion of this whole thing to put my angie's angel in um also if you liked the angie's angel that i did let me show you um this girl right here if you I've been that if you like her I have that's her all painted up and colored up I have her I have the drawing and um the drawing of her and I'm going to put the drawing I had a couple of people ask me they said they wanted to color her so I will put her in my Etsy shop um probably by tomorrow you can check um the only thing different I have to underneath here where her eyelashes are I need to make them like thicker like I did in the in here I did it separately. See how underneath her eyelashes are really, really nice and thick? So I will thicken those up before I put this in my Etsy shot. So, okay, you guys, that is it. Let me shut up. <laughs> um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd love for you to do so. If you can give this video a thumbs up, that'd be great. Any comments or questions, leave them below. Come visit me on Facebook and Instagram. If you would, share this video. And I will talk to you guys in the next video.